G'day everyone and welcome to my video today and thanks for stopping by. I've made this card today, number one birthday card for my little granddaughter, my Ray, and I'm going to show you how I did it. It was quite easy and let's get started. So first off I've got some Nina Solar White in 110 pound cardstock here and this is in white so it is fairly thick uh, as well so I do want this card to have some stability. Now using my Stamping Up scoreboard here I'm actually going to score the card at uh, 12 centimeters, just like I would when making just a normal card. So this cardstock is quite thick and you do want to score it a few times just to break that fibre down in this cardstock. By breaking the fibre down it will be easier to fold the card and using your bone folder making a crisp clean fold. So once again just using my Lawn Fawn Teflon bone folder I find this fantastic and does give a really crisp fold. Now I have made a template just out of just lightweight uh, photocopy paper and as my normal saying is measure twice cut once. So I'm just going to measure both top and bottom to the 11 centimeter mark. So my card will be 11 centimeters wide. So just with a pencil I'm just going to lightly uh, draw this line just to make sure that everything will be squared up also. So I'm going to measure five centimeters from the bottom of the card on the left hand and the right hand side. Now turning the card the right way I'm going to measure in three centimeters and eight centimeters and I'll do the same so I measure that up the top just so I know that the card will all be squared and my letter one will not be skew if. So all the measurements that I am using I will have over on my website and my website link will be listed in the description box below. Now measuring from the 5 centimeter mark on the bottom of the card I'm going to measure up 10 centimeters. So from this mark to the bottom of the card should represent 15 centimeters. So once again just going to draw that line across just as a guide. Now on the bottom part here this is my folded part of the card. I'm going to measure up 3 centimeters or 18 centimeters from the bottom so this will be the start of the top of the letter one. To finish off the top of the number one it will be 20 centimeters from the bottom of the card. So in the end this card will measure 20 centimeters by 11 centimeters. Now I am just going to freehand an arc here to join the top of my number one to the left hand side of the number one here. Now that's all done all I need to do is just cut away this part of the card which will be waste. Now I am going to use a combination of scissors my guillotine and my Fiskars paper trimmer to cut out the letter one. I find sometimes that one works better than the other depending on what waste that I'm actually cutting out. So you do want to take your time doing this as well. By cutting out clean lines it will add to a perfect card. <laughs> So that's now all cut out. I'm just going to erase all the pencil marks on the front of my card. Also just tidy up any of the corners that may have not cut very square as well. Now this card will be layered with some paper as well. So I've got some nice pink shimmery paper which is going to be the um, the next layer on this card. With the template I'm actually going to create exactly the same number one using the measurements in my base of my card.
So now I've got exactly the same size as my base card. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a approximately quarter of a centimetre around all the edges. So I do this because I do want to make sure that it looks pretty straight and roughly the same amount of um, card that I'm going to be cutting away as well. So just drawing all this up. So now I'm happy with what I've done. I've just got my Fisker's finger knife here and I do love using this. So you do wanna make sure that you do have a very sharp blade and I've just got a self-healing cutting mat here, which I'm just gonna cut away all that uh, excess card uh, stock. So I can really get into the corners as well of uh, the corners just here and that will give me a nice clean cut. First of all, I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy with my placement of my pink card that I have cut out. Once I'm happy with this, what I'll do is I'll butt my left hand side and my right hand side up to the edge of the white cardstock and I'm just going to trace around this arc part here. This will ensure that I do have exactly the same amount of white card showing underneath as well. So good little tip. I'm just going to erase all those lines on the pink cardstock uh, as well before putting another layer of paper on top of this. I do have this Kayser Craft paper uh, from the Fairy Garden collection and all the supplies that I will be using will be listed over on my website also. I'm going to do exactly the same process with uh, the pink cardstock and cut out the number one uh, exactly the same way. Now I am going to cut off about half a centimetre this time so I'm just eyeballing all of this just measuring off before I do actually cut it just to make sure that I'm happy with where I'm going to be cutting. Now I'm happy with all of that and it looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same as what I did uh, before with the arc part. Just line up the two sides and just with my scissors, I'm just gonna cut that piece away. So now I'm just layering it up just to make sure that I'm happy with anything. There may be some little bits that I could just cut away. I do find that uh, at this point here, 
that I need to cut some more away. So I also do want to colour the outside uh, of all my cardstock. I'm not sure what colour, so this is my sample book of my inks and paints and, and all that. So I do love this book because I do come to it fairly often. So I can actually match up what colour that I do need to use to make my card pop a little bit more. So I have got some Distressed Oxide ink in Picked Raspberry and I'm just going to go around all the elements on this just with this colour. I think it'll really make the card pop. now to put the card together I'm just going to glue uh, each of the layers down using my Aileen's tacky glue I find this is pretty good uh, to uh, use in between all the layers it also gives you a little bit of wiggle room just to move the piece around to make sure that it's all lined up So a while ago I stamped out a heap of sentiments on this card just in readiness to use on cards as I go. So I've got this one and I did this in rose gold and I also embossed over the top with some clear embossing powder. So I don't know whether I want to use the rose gold or whether I do want to use a black sentiment on here. So I'm just going to cut one of each and just to see which one I'm going to use which one looks a bit better. going to use some foam adhesive just to pop up this sentiment on the front of the card. I have this alphabet die that I purchased from AliExpress some time ago and if I can find it on AliExpress I will link it over on my website. I'm just going to use some shiny black cardstock and I just want to put Maya Ray's name on the front. I did cut it out of pink cardstock but I found that it just got lost on the front of the card so I have changed it over to some black cardstock. going to use some zig glue here I just find it really uh, nice to use this and I'm just going to use my tweezers just to help me place the letters on the front of the card my card finished for today. I'm pretty pleased with it and I think this will be a nice thing to keep in years to come and reflect back on it. I did make also a matching 
envelope using my 123 punch board by We Are Memory Keepers. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And until next time, happy crafting. See ya!